Assassin's Creed has had a long and troubled history with leaks. The newly announced Odyssey could have been one of the very few genuine surprises at E3 this year, but sadly it was among the countless games that were leaked, some war or another, prior to their E3 reveal. The leak forced Ubisoft's hand, leading to them confirming the game's existence with a very brief tease a few days before E3, while subsequent leaks continue to reveal even more information about the game still. However, it was only after Ubisoft's recently held E3 press event that we got our first good and official look at Assassin's Creed Odyssey where we were able to learn a great deal of new information about the game. Remember how last year's Origins was being called a Witcher 3 clone in Assassin's Creed's clothing? Well, that's going to be doubly true for Odyssey, though perhaps clone is the wrong word to use here. Because not only is Odyssey going to be structured more or less like Origins was, which in turn is structured like the CD Projekt Red RPG and other Witcher 3 inspired games like Horizon, it's also going to feature everything else you might expect to see in a game of that ilk. How? Well, that's why we're here. Here in this feature, we're going to talk about the 15 most major talking points about Assassin's Creed Odyssey. There really is a lot to talk about, so let's jump right in. Setting One of the first things that people ask about any time a new Assassin's Creed game is announced is where it will be set, and what era it will take place in. Well, Odyssey's setting is a particularly fascinating one. The game is set in ancient Greece, sometime around 430 BCE. Interestingly enough, this is also the farthest back this series has ever gone back in the timeline. Assassin's Creed Origins is, up until now, the first chronological game in the series, which was set between 47 and 49 BCE, which means that Odyssey is going to be set roughly 400 years before that. Narrative Setup Origins was supposed to be the game that revealed how the Assassin Brotherhood was created, and it did that to a large extent. It left a few things unanswered, such as the origins of the Hidden Blade or the creed that the Brotherhood follows as gospel. It's pretty clear then that Odyssey is going to delve deeper into the origins of the shadowy group. Even if none of that were true, however, Odyssey's narrative premise would have been enough to capture interest all by itself. That's because it takes place during the Peloponnesian War, which was a bloody conflict between the Greek city-states of Athens and Sparta. It's in the backdrop of this conflict that the game's story takes place, and that's certainly enough to get us excited. Choose your protagonist Odyssey is going to be doing a number of things that no game in the series has ever done before in its endeavour to turn Assassin's Creed into a proper, fully-fledged RPG. That will start with the very beginning of the game, when players will be given the choice of who they want to play as, either as a male protagonist named Alexios, or a female protagonist named Cassandra. Unlike Syndicate, where both the Fry twins were playable simultaneously, a la GTA V, once you pick a character in Odyssey, you're going to stick with them for the rest of the game. Protagonist's Backstory Thankfully though, Ubisoft claims that it's made sure that even though players will be choosing one of these two protagonists as their character, both these people will very much be their own persons, with clearly defined characteristics and personalities that will make them much more than just avatars as many games might have otherwise chosen to do in the scenario of choosing which character to play as. Regardless of whether you choose Alexios or Cassandra though, some things will remain unchanged. The protagonist will be a Spartan soldier who is estranged from their home and family, and has turned into a mercenary. Interestingly enough, the protagonist will also be the grandchild of the legendary Spartan warrior and king Leonidas, a personality who might be known to fans of 300. As such, players will find themselves in possession of Leonidas' spear, which will not only serve as your primary weapon during the game, but is also being described as one of the mythical pieces of Eden. Interesting. Branching Paths Oh, but it gets better. Assassin's Creed is truly becoming a proper fully-fledged RPG and no single fact makes that as readily apparent as this one does. There are going to be branching narratives in Odyssey. 
Players will be able to make their own choices and decisions during both gameplay and story, and the narrative will progress based on these choices. Interestingly enough, Ubisoft has also confirmed that the game will have multiple endings. How all of this will be reconciled with the fact that Assassin's Creed is supposed to be set in a historical time rather than a fictional one should be interesting to see. Changing the course of the war Let's stick with the decision-making mechanics in Odyssey for a while. Players' abilities to change the way the game plays out will go far beyond just picking between different branching paths in the narrative. In Odyssey, you play as a Spartan mercenary, a sword for hire, which is something that is going to play into that decision-making aspect of the game quite heavily. You will be able to take on work for both Athens and Sparta, and what you do while doing this work will have an impact on the war between the two. You can decide which side to favour in the war, while you can also just choose to do the work that pays the most. We're hearing this will also impact other things, such as availability of quests, progression of various quest lines, the ability to recruit certain characters, and more. But just to what extent all of this will be affected is something that remains to be seen. Either way, the concept, even on paper, sounds excellent. So let's hope the game implements it properly. Dialogue choices. Here's another big addition, something that 10 years ago you could never have imagined would be part of Assassin's Creed one day. But here we are, and boy are we glad for this. Assassin's Creed Odyssey will feature dialogue options. And from all the gameplay footage and coverage we've seen over the last few days, they're going to be proper, meaningful dialogue choices, rather than just being variations on the same responses. You can accept or refuse to do quests. You can probe further into conversations to extract more information on stuff. You can build relationships with deeper interactions. In a nutshell, it's a proper dialogue choice system, not a cursory and needless one that has no real effect on the game, like what we saw in something like, say, Uncharted 4. The GTA-style Wanted system. And here's something else that acts as even further evidence to conclusively prove that Assassin's Creed is now a proper RPG, a wanted system. So, if you think that you can get away with killing enemies, then think again. There is a consequence-based system, which will ensure that patrols will get after you, seeking for revenge should you kill any of the citizens or enemies within the game. The Map the map has been one of Assassin's Creed's core pillars since the franchise's inception. Map design and map size are things that can make or break an Assassin's Creed game, or any open world game for that matter. And thankfully, these are also areas the series has rarely, if ever, disappointed in. Origins Ancient Egypt last year, in fact, was perhaps one of the best open world maps of the last decade or so. Not only was it beautiful, it was also absolutely massive and full of interesting things to do and see. Odyssey, though, is going to be even bigger. We don't have the exact numbers and figures to figure out how much bigger than its predecessors it will be, but we do know that it's going to be the biggest Assassin's Creed map to date. It should be noted, though, that vast portions of the map are going to be covered in the sea. Oh, and that brings us to our next point. Naval Combat if there's one thing, the only thing, I will forever be grateful to Assassin's Creed 3 for, it's that the game, which was otherwise a bitter disappointment, introduced the series, much to everyone's surprise, to naval traversal and combat. The mechanic was so popular that Ubisoft built an entire Assassin's Creed game around it with Black Flag, which, according to almost every series fan, is one of the best, if not the best, Assassin's Creed games and then spawned an entirely new upcoming IP built around the mechanic with Skull and Bones. And now, naval combat is going to return to the series with Odyssey. Of course, this game is set many years before staple naval warfare technologies like cannons even existed, so prepare to use volleys of arrows as your primary weapons instead. Additionally, your ship and your crew will also be upgradable and customizable. Doing quests and making choices may or may not unlock new characters you can recruit into your crew based on your decisions. Sounds very, very interesting to say the least. Enhanced Combat 
The one area that Origins completely overhauled and made almost totally unrecognizable from past Assassin's Creed games was the combat. Ubisoft, however, aren't done changing things up with the combat. While the basic frame the combat is built on is the one that was pioneered by Origins, Odyssey is adding a ton of stuff on top of it, giving players different skills and abilities to use in the middle of combat. Basically, you can map different abilities to eight slots, one on each face button, four for each trigger. As you fill up your adrenaline bar, rather than unleashing an execution move like you used to do in Origins, you'll now be able to use one of these abilities. One of these can, for instance, heal your character, replacing potions from the previous game. Another lets you do a shield break on more defense-oriented enemies, while yet another lets you do a powerful, awesome Spartan kick, and these are just a few examples. Certainly, combat in Odyssey seems to be quite nimble and versatile, and an excellent extension of the foundation that was laid down in Origins. Deeper Customization Customization was, of course, a vital aspect of the core gameplay loop in Origins. Much like a lot of the other stuff done by Origins, though, Odyssey is going to make the mechanic even deeper and more layered. Not only can you upgrade your gear and your weapons, you know, the regular stuff, but you can also decide which skills and abilities, which we just spoke of while discussing the game's combat, to unlock and level up. There seems to be a lot of versatility and options involved, and we're excited to hear more about this from Ubisoft in the near future. Large-scale battles There's one more thing Odyssey is adding to Assassin's Creed that we still haven't discussed, and that is large-scale in-game battles. Odyssey is going to be fully committed to its setting of the Athens-Sparta War. In fact, battles between the two warring sides are going to be an actual, fully-fledged gameplay mechanic in the game. Each side will have 150 soldiers each, and players will be able to rush into the middle of these hectic and busy battles head-on, with their objective being to kill as many enemy captains as possible before their own forces are wiped out. We saw a brief section of this during Ubisoft's E3 press event, and from what we've seen, it looks incredible. Mythological Beasts Assassin's Creed has, of course, always been a franchise steeped in historical events, and has maintained at least some semblance of accuracy. It has also, however, often taken liberties with what's real and what isn't every now and then. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is going to do that too. Of course, it's not going to be a completely fantasy-focused game. No, only elements of it, but even those elements seem pretty cool. Mythological Greek beasts such as the Minotaur and Medusa are going to be included in the game. That's… yeah. That's all the information we have on this particular aspect of Odyssey yet, but it sounds intriguing, that's for sure. The visuals. And lastly, let's talk a little bit about just how beautiful Assassin's Creed Odyssey looks from a visuals perspective. It looks brighter, sharper, and crisper than any Assassin's Creed game has ever looked. It looks bright and colorful, much more so than Origins. And a large reason for that, of course, is the visually impressive setting of ancient Greece. Admittedly, there were a few technical issues in the footage shown off, such as a few stiff animations and lip-syncing issues. However, the game is still roughly four months away from its launch, so we're hoping Ubisoft will quash out all of those kinks before it releases. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.